Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of God for the people of God. When I was growing up, I had a me maw. Did anybody else have a me maw or a me me or a granny? My me maw spent her whole life in a small town on the Tennessee River. She was a devoted, lifelong member of the First Baptist Church. She was a tall, thin woman who wore polyester pants with the elastic band that made her stomach pooch out at the bottom. Did your grandma wear those too? <laughs> Meemaw got up early every Sunday and started cooking. She would put food in the oven on low, get dressed and go to church, and then come straight home and set the table for every one of her kids, grandkids, and in-laws. Only after she had served everyone else would she then sit down to eat the Sunday dinner. She grew a garden every summer. She plowed the rows herself with hand tools. She made us all clothes and quilts and afghans and little tatted doilies. She had a one-room beauty shop in the back of her little house. Every week, she styled all of her friends' and neighbors' hair. Even when they died, she was the one that went to the funeral home and styled their hair. She shared everything she had, and she did not have a lot. She tolerated a lot of shenanigans from us grandkids and she never once raised her voice. Not even when my cousin Eric rocked so hard and fast in her rocking chair that he rocked it right out her front window. <laughs> Meemaw generously gave us her time, talents, patience, and love. She did this for everyone who knew her. Meemaw reminds me of Tabitha. In our miracle story this morning, the writer of Acts tells us that Tabitha's life was full of good works and charity. She took care of other women and made clothes for everyone, and then she became ill and died. We don't know if Tabitha was a mother, but we know she was a widow that was loved by her community. As a feminist theologian, I often examine scripture with a hermeneutic of suspicion. So when I read this story, the very first question that comes to mind is, what do you imagine wore Tabitha to death? Do you remember your parents yelling, you kids better cut that out, you're gonna wear me to death. The text says she grew ill and died. Do you think this means she spent her life in service to others to the point of exhaustion, to her own demise? Or remembering the marginalized status of women in the first century, do you think maybe the weight of oppression cut her life short? Theologian Mitzi Smith says that Tabitha bears the privilege and burden of being the only named Methatria in the New Testament. The Greek word Methatria means female disciple. Tabitha was one of many female disciples, yet she is the only one that is named as such in all of the New Testament. Did you know women funded Jesus' ministry? They were present with him along with the other disciples and were the ones that remained even when the others fled. Have you experienced strong women in your life that have stuck with you through thick and thin? Maybe your mother, your grandmother, maybe your wife, a 
close female friend who never stopped believing in you. Yeah. Women can be cool like that. Let's give thanks for them today. Women tend to nurture, and those like Tabitha sometimes nurture entire communities. Tabitha's contribution to her community was so powerful that they all, women and men, gathered together to help her in her time of need and mourn her death. They desperately did not want to lose the expression of God's love that her life provided to them. She was valuable to her community because in spite of her marginalized status, she lived her life for others. Theologian Stephen Jones says, the congregation at Joppa was vulnerable. They stood together using all the tools and spiritual resources available to them, weeping together, hoping together, celebrating together. They were unafraid to wade into each other's lives in transforming ways. The emphasis of this text is not upon a return from death, but on a community honing all of its spiritual strength and resources passionately upon life and wholeness. Yes, this miracle story is much more about Tabitha and her impact on the community than it is about Peter. Yes, Luke tells us that Peter prayed for her and she was raised back to life, but pay close attention to what is happening here. Miracle stories represent hope to the listening audience. Theologian William Loder says, stories of raising the dead symbolize hope. The good news is about bringing life where there is death, love where there is hate, healing where there is brokenness. Whenever we stop trying to take miracle stories literally and we look at the miracle story as metaphor, then the overarching message is not simply on whether or not the dead can be resuscitated, but the message becomes an emphasis on the resurrection power of community. The coalition between Peter and the male disciples as men who have chosen to walk in solidarity with Tabitha and the female disciples, that cooperation, that coalition, releases resurrection power. So we can see Peter sets an example for those faithful men today who choose to walk in solidarity alongside women as they seek to create just communities for themselves and others. Peter uses what resources and skills he has to help Tabitha. That's what advocates do. That's what feminists do. Feminism has nothing to do with women holding picket signs and burning bras. Feminism is about the flourishing of all God's children, women, men, regardless of gender, race, age, and it even includes the creation. It mirrors the teachings of Jesus and invites men to come alongside women as advocates for the well-being of all. With this understanding, we can see that men can be feminists too. Being a feminist means you believe in and work toward creating the just conditions so that everyone may flourish. Our church today is still called to be an extension of the incarnation. We too <clears throat> can re re resurrect the spiritually dead by creating conditions that give life to all persons. The power lies in Christ-centered cooperation and community. This is an expression of Christ's healing in the world today. Where are some of the places that need this healing the most? Well, with Tabitha's story being in the lectionary this week and today being Mother's Day, it makes sense to focus on women. Because women tend to be the world's caregivers. Boundaries are important. None of us are called to be doormats. All of us, <clears throat> excuse me, men and women, need to know when and how to give as well as what work it is that God has planned for us to do at certain points in our lives. All of us, men and women, need God's guidance to know what things we need to let go of and when, when to say no and when to say yes. Mitzi J. Smith says, God's Spirit will lead us to have balanced lives full of self-care as we care for others. Well, that is a nice ideal but in reality, having a balanced life full of self-care is simply not an option for most of the world's women. Women are still being marginalized and worn out because of one ancient outdated paradigm, the paradigm of patriarchy. For example, 
Women today are still being paid half to two-thirds of what men are paid for the same job. Oftentimes, even with less pay, more is expected of them than men. For women of color, it is worse. So there are single mothers working two jobs to provide for their children by themselves. Sometimes a woman's only choice is to remain in an abusive relationship or deal with homelessness. There are women and children living out of their cars because they cannot bring in enough income to cover the costs of just getting by. Their paychecks can't cover the rent to keep a roof over their heads. The unequal distribution of earning power results in a power imbalance so that many women cannot have autonomy over their own lives. They are financially unable to make the best decisions for themselves and their children. Because of this power imbalance, women around the world remain marginalized. If oppression doesn't kill one physically, it can surely kill spiritually. And so there are thousands of women and girls across the world needing spiritual resuscitation. As Methodists, our history is rich with efforts to improve social situations for women and children. How can we help today? Here are three suggestions. First, we can start by doing all we can to rectify the problem of the gender pay gap so that we, our daughters and granddaughters, can experience justice and equality and have the same opportunity to have autonomy over our own lives. In other words, the opportunity to flourish. Secondly, we can support survivors of abuse and harassment by listening to them and validating their experience by not falling prey to the old stigma that women can tend to be hysterical or hormonal. Women and girls have been stigmatized for too long. It is time society listens to survivors and believes them, male and female, whenever they have the courage to speak up. We must take their witness seriously. Lastly, we can support organizations such as Thistle Farms in Nashville, Tennessee, a safe community created by Episcopal priest Becca Stevens for survivors of sex trafficking to come and live and receive healing and job training so their lives can be restored. Thistle and Bee here in Memphis and the Dorothy Day House are some others with similar missions. These are just three suggestions. The rest of the story about my Meemaw, I never knew until I was grown. I did not realize my Meemaw had survived spousal abuse. I didn't realize she stayed with her husband until all of her children were married and out of the house because she felt she had no other option. She had no means to leave him and still provide for her children. She was a beautician in the 1950s. Meemaw would have never survived her situation without her community. When the time was right, with the support of her community, she left and found new life. She lived well into her 90s. Her story had a happy ending. She was a Tabitha, living her life in service to others. She had very little resources, but she freely shared her time, talents, and attention with anyone she met. Women give. Women suffer. Women bring life into the world through excruciating pain and superhuman strength. They carry heavy burdens and they love deeply. This world needs everything women have to offer. Do you know Tabitha? Do you see women like her in your world? Think of all the Nancys, the Lila Beths, the Blairs, the Dawns, Dales, Glorias, Glendas, Earlines, the Harriets, the Helens, Merediths, Marjories, Claires, Catherines, Carla's, Ann Walton's, Rebecca's, Betty's, Betsy's, and Barbara's, Heather's, Emily's, Ashley's, Ann's, Amy's, Ava's, Jane's, Jill's, Jennifer's, Janet's, Jocelyn's, Janina's, Kirsten's, Kristen's, Carol's, Chelsea's, Kay's, Kathy's, Paula's, Linda's, Susan's, Sophie's, Rachel's, Emmy's, Carolyn's, Shannon's, Cynthia's, Lynn's, Mary Lee's, Molly's, Missy's, Margaret's, Phyllis's, Patty's, and Teresa's in your world. Think of your grandmother, your mother, selfless women, Tabitha's all around us, spending their time, their talent, and their lives for others. 
Let us thank God for our women and girls by supporting them in every way that we can. Let us work for justice and equality as an extension of the resurrection power of Christ in this world so that one day soon, we might be able to say to every oppressed woman and girl, Tabitha, get up. Your community is here for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.